last one we show saw more jump than lift in the flying change but as you say plenty ahead of this horse as it gets confirmed at the level So we're going to look in for the confirmed score for Andrew Nicholson and Avery. 51.7, the penalty score, 65%, 66 and two thirds, 65 across the three judges. That gives it equal ninth alongside another strong competitor, Sinead Halpern and Manuel de Carleville on that 51.7 score. So Andrew Nicholson and Avery still very much in touch in this Rolex Kentucky three-day event. That's just showing how tough it is here in this arena and the judging. I think that's probably one of the worst scores that he's had at CIC or CCI level on that horse ever really. I mean, he's always does a very, very strong test. So I won't expect Andrew to be very pleased with that, if I'm honest. No, yeah. Andrew certainly won. It will leave you in no doubt about what he thinks either. <laughs> Definitely not. Maybe we shouldn't ask him. <laughs> a lovely looking athlete of a horse and this rider Jennifer McFall looking really really happy to be here in this main arena at Rolex. Let's see what sort of test she can pull together today. Hopefully he can handle the atmosphere. We're seeing so many horses crumble with the pressure. Well uh, yeah we welcome one of our visitors from the west coast from Wilson California. High times Yay, written California. by Jennifer McFall. <laughs> Tenth at uh, Galway Downs in the three star there at March in Temecula, California. Competition run by Robert Kellerhouse. He runs a lot of the West Coast competitions and he's a bit of an evangelist really about making sure that there's a good enough circuit on the West Coast that riders can stay there, be based there, be selected onto teams from there. And he's so, so proud of Gina Miles, who's going to be working with us tomorrow, her silver medal at the Olympic Games from being based and being able to stay on the West Coast. And he's done such a great job with that event and I really take my hat off to him there. It was great to be a part of it last year and to see how much it's evolved in, in all the years that he's been running it. And I really hope that he can keep pushing the West Coast to have the sort of circuit that the East Coast has. Such a big rangy horse this. He looks a lot of horse to contain in a test. Yeah, 16-3 Holsteiner by Hunter. Fourteenth at Rebecca Farm up in uh, Montana last year. And ninth in the Jersey Fresh three-star three-day event. Very good medium trot. If she can just hold that together, it should be a good mark there. A lot of push from behind, a lot of action. Just could have shown a little bit more difference coming back from the medium. He could have just sat on his hops a little bit more there. It just looks to be getting a little bit on rebound. I'm surprised by those marks. Seven, six, and six for the medium trot. That is very surprising. I would have thought that would have been much better. Just getting away from her a little bit now. I think it's just a, a matter of the atmosphere and the excitement of it all. Again, you can just see a little bit of the white of the eye. This horse is keen to have a good look around. Like so many we've seen before, just spun on that left hind at the last moment of the uh, half pirouette. A movement that most of us as riders truly dislike, because it's always such a grey area as to how best to ride it. But we were talking yesterday, Karen and I, about, you know, I said to Karen, would you like to see it both ways? And she said, if I had my choice, I wouldn't like to see it in the test at all. But I yeah, if totally I had my choice agree with both that. ways. <laughs> I would love to not have it at all. Let's just get rid of it. <laughs> And well, Hansch is just ticking over a little bit there in the half pass. I think some of the judges will see that. She might get lucky with the judge there at E. So with us in the ring at the moment is Jennifer McFall, Jennifer McFall and High Times. Our visitors from the West Coast. And we were saying yesterday we should definitely single them out because we talk a lot about the horses that fly across the Atlantic to come and compete here, but it is just as difficult and as tricky a journey to fly over from the West Coast. It's a 
a shame. I think it's just got, lost a bit of attention there and didn't quite understand the question when she asked for the cancer. That's a real shame for the marks. And he's just looking a bit difficult in the mouth and very, very keen to ride. And he's, he's a big, big, big striding horse, which is always difficult to contain in the ring. And I think just his excitement is making it a bit difficult for him. Yeah, this canter is losing a lot of its quality. You can you can see through to what should be there. Yes, I think the horse moves very well. I think he's got a lot of talent, um, but he's just not quite packaged up enough at the moment. Just getting a bit free and onward bound and a little bit onto the forehand, which is why the change got lost there as well. He's looking very strong, actually. Oh, and a flying change there. Oh, what a shame. It's difficult as a rider when things start to unravel a little bit like this to sort of force yourself to stay relaxed and claw it back. It's always difficult, especially with a horse that's getting more and more excited. And I think she's doing the best she can to keep it together here. the final stages. Oh, the shame is late behind there, just getting a little bit onto the forehand, a bit strong in the hand. And then late again there. Well, Jennifer McFall and High Times, this uh, registered American Holstein Horse Association horse, riding their first four star. Plenty of support anyway, and they will be looking to go out on that cross country tomorrow and wrap up their first Rolex here on Sunday and put the thoughts of this little white box of fun behind them. <laughs> the torture chamber. I was going to say, I'm not sure if everybody would agree with you that it's a box of fun. <laughs> Well, I think this horse has a lot of expression, he's got nice paces, just needed to be a little bit more packaged up today, which is easier said than done in this big, big arena at Rolex. Yeah, and a big horse, a Holsteiner bred horse, just 10 years old as well. So, you know, Jennifer's done a brilliant job bringing him up to four star by 10 years old, because they have to qualify, they have to get a certain level of result at each of the preceding star levels, one, two, and three, in order to be allowed to progress. Oh, she looks pretty happy anyway. Happy to be at her first four star this week, sir. West Coast of Canadian, Holy Better Day one there. The first to congratulate Jennifer. Thank you. Just gone out of shot now. We saw her yesterday with the great Ginny, Gin and Juice. But look at the number of people in. We go into the judging break now. After high times of Jennifer's test, we restart at uh, 10 minutes to 3 for the final run of horses that includes Olympian Peter Barry for Canada, William Fox Pitt for Great Britain, Sharon White, second ride, Kirsten Schmaltz, who was lucky enough to win a Rolex here on Wednesday night. Will she win another one on Sunday? Alison Springer and Arthur, who were the runners up here a couple of years ago, Libby Head and Sir Rock Star, Philip Dutton and Mighty Nice, Bruce Deschers was his lo lovely horse that won the three star at Red Hills a couple of years ago and Ballino Castle RM and Buck Davidson, the reigning USEF national four-star champions with their fourth place, oh so close, here last year. There you go, very tail end of the day. So we've got a confirmed score for Selena O'Hanlon and Foxwood High for Canada. Just to get a young horse coming up to the level. And it's 62 and a third, 62, 62 for 56.8 penalties. And that goes into uh, 23rd position, in fact, just in front of Selena's other score with Bellani Rock. So don't forget to come back and join us for the final session of judging. Uh, just before 10 minutes to 3 Eastern, that is six hours behind Central Europe. And then we'll be back with Karen O'Connor and myself, John Carl, from this Rolex Kentucky three-day event presented by Land Rover.